Hi, I'm Hanno Wuringer, and this is Back to the Kingdom series. This time I want to share with you my thoughts about prayer. This series is meant to consist of 10 different short talks, where I share 10 points about Christian faith. And my aim is to give you new biblical understanding what does it understand your faith in a Christ-centered way? Because too often it happens that we have, how to say, we have lived in, inside a tradition which has made it very difficult for us to understand what's the meaning of the Bible, what was the meaning in, in the teaching of Jesus. And we are living in past and church-centered culture. This time I want to speak with you about prayer. Prayer is, you can say that it's ma mother's milk, which feeds us to understand what does it mean as a Christian. It's a pity that in most cases we are taught to pray only misinterpreted prayers. Give this, give that, bless that. And very often when we take a look around in our churches, we see that it's the same me prayer which continues there, which in a way keeps at us thinking that God is our servant, we are, and we are just saying him how he should serve us. In reality, that kind of prayer was a prayer which happened in the Old Covenant. During that time, God say that if you live okay, you will get the blessing, which are earthly blessings, long life, many descendants, a lot of money. But in New Covenant, we, we are supposed to live. Prayer and blessings are different. For example, when we speak about prayer, in Old Covenant it was very often Abraham, Moses and others they tried to convince God to do differently. They asked, do this, help this, do that. But the New Covenant, the question is different. God isn't any more far away, distant God. No, He is with us, inside us, through His Holy Spirit. And the main purpose in prayer is even to listen, listen Him and to take those steps which he is calling us to take. So, for example, when we are li listening that somebody is gathering thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand prayer warriors to do something, that's ridiculous. There is no that kind of model for that kind of prayer anywhere in the Bible, in New Testament. The number of the people who are saying to God, God, do this, God, do this, no. The, the different thing may be that if all those 10,000 people are repenting, uh, they are giving their life before God and looking for His will and ready to take new steps. I think that in those kind of situations, God is ready to give His mercy to those people. But for us, prayer basically is individual thing. As we, as we see from New Testament, Jesus' disciples, they wanted to understand how Jesus, it was possible that Jesus was so successful. That's why they asked Jesus, how do you pray? Teach us to pray too. And he taught it to them. He taught them our Father. He taught that the basic starting point in the prayer is trust. God is Father. He knows better than me. I ask, let your will happen. In a way, in Old Covenant, people were all the, all the time afraid that something negative could happen. And that that's the normal way we are thinking. God, control this thing. Help there. Help, help here. But in New Covenant, New Testament, the point is that we understand that God is controlling. I'm, I'm in your kingdom and you are in control of the circumstances. I don't have to be fear. I can be in rest. I ask wisdom from you 
how I could take steps which are according your will, how I could serve others, how, how I could be moved, be moved by, the, by your spirit so that the bigger picture you are controlling could happen here. That's why in New, New Covenant it's always important that people are learning to repent. I'm speaking about the change of the mind when we are sharing with each other in which way God has spoken to us. Normally it does mean that God is speaking to us how I could serve something. He is teaching me to forgive somebody. He is teaching to me to take care of somebody in a way how, how our hearts could be changed and in which way we could take those steps which are according his will and when this happens in a bigger group when everybody is looking for God's will then the real f formation of the body of Christ is possible but normally if only one person is speaking or only if one is praying people are dependent on that person they don't teach learn to be dependent on the Holy Spirit who is always willing to speak to us, Christ's mind and Christ's will, and who is always willing to teach us how Christ is speaking to us through his word. When we think of the way the Paul was teaching prayer, he shared very often that he was praying for other people, that God would give them inner revelation, that he, they could understand his grace, they could understand his will, that they could be more spiritual natured. But in very rare occasions, Paul prayed anything about his circumstances. In a way, he was trusting that God knows everything. If there are hard times through which he is taking us, He's, he just asked the power and strength to go through them because very often God is taking us through difficult, difficult things so that our hearts could be changed. So we in a way understand that in many churches where they are teaching how to say man-centered theology, how you can be successful, how you can get money, how you can get that and that, basically those people don't trust God. They try to manipulate God to help them those things they want. But they are missing the bigger vision, what's God's vision, people who are living kingdom life, people who are united in love and prayer, and people who are his testimony in this world. In most cases, these churches which are preaching about success they are inviting mainly fleshly people who are motivated to come to the church because they, are, they have given the promise you will get more money, you will get more blessing or whatever. And the same way, very often when there is old covenant church, let's say church where people are living under the law, they are trusting their pastor, pray you, God hears you. Because they are thinking that, question is that we are trying to convince God to do something, to convince God to bless us, convince God to open the doors. But they are missing the point that the question is that we are, everybody, we all are learning to listen to God's voice, take steps, love each other and go further. That's why we can say that when there is real worrying amongst Christians, that does mean that we don't know what's the kingdom. In the kingdom, we are called to look at those people, our surrounding, and serve there, and trust God, and know that God, is, God does have in control everything. Very often, religious people, I think that if I pray enough, God will do something in real life kingdom life you should pray but basically you are praying that you could understand how you should work 
how you should serve others, in which way God will can give you revelation how you can be blessing to others. Sometimes so very super charismatic church, but people are doing very little because they they have been taught that you should pray, 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 then God will bless you. And the funny thing is that if you take a look at, for example, Nigerian church, where people are really praying a lot, you see that corruption and uh, people's circumstances are very low because they don't work. They are superstitious that if they just ask, but if prayer isn't just asking, they, uh, prayer isn't just being dependent on the past, but prayer is that you are willing to be changed according to God's will and do those things, what God is speaking to you. And just when you are learning on a daily basis, take these steps, what God is speaking to you, how you can uh, le learning to serve and love those people which you meet. In that process, you are finding your calling simultaneously. In some churches, we are used to hear that uh, faith is personal relationship. I think that many people don't understand what does it mean. Because we don't find it in the Bible. But I think that the, in some traditional churches, people are thinking, yes, God gave Jesus. I believe in, in Jesus, so... I'm forgiven. Now I trust God, God loves me. But personal relationship with God, Jesus, it does mean that uh, I believe in that, that now I'm in the kingdom. And Jesus is willing to give his Holy Spirit to me that I, I'm able to hear his voice. I'm a, able to tell him how do I feel, what are my questions, and I'm able to find answers. So that's the part of learning this personal process with Jesus personal relationship that just me means that I don't trust that other people are responsible for my life with God but it's my life with Jesus but I need other Christians sisters and brothers with whom I'm sharing my processes. Together I, we can say what we have been taught, what we have learned, and we can together help, okay, we can encourage each other to grow in love, to grow in wisdom, and help filter those things which are ridiculous. Because you know, basically, in the church we should learn to listen God's will together. And understand that always, everybody, a little bit, will make mistakes. But if you are trying to only listen to ourselves, without our other Christians, so sometimes we pay high price when we understand Bible wrong way, we understand wrong way our feelings or the way we understand God is speaking to us, and we are making mistakes. That's why... We need sisters and brothers with whom we can share and together learn to think how we can grow in love and serve this world with God's love. Thank you for your listening. Be blessed and I'll be back soon. I'm Han Warinen and this is Back to the Kingdom for our 10 series. Bye bye.